22 years, $2.1 trillion. That's what America spent perfecting one fighter jet. Meanwhile, a $400 drone just destroyed an $8 million tank in Ukraine. The F-35 was supposed to dominate the skies until 2070, but by the time it finally got approval in 2024, the war had already moved on. While we pour decades into making the perfect plane, our adversaries figured out how to win wars with technology you can buy online. The future of combat isn't in the cockpit anymore, and we might have just realized it too late. Stay with me because what happened next forced the Pentagon to rewrite everything they thought they knew about modern warfare. In October 2001, Lockheed Martin won the contract to build America's next great fighter jet. The promise was simple. One aircraft, three variants, ready by 2008. It would replace the F-16, the A-10, the Harrier, and the F-A-18. Every branch of the military would get their perfect plane. Fast forward to 2024, that's when the F-35 finally got full production approval. 23 years late, nearly $200 billion over budget. And here's the twist. By the time it was ready, the battlefield had completely changed. Ukraine didn't defeat Russian armor with fighter jets. They did it with drones that cost less than a used car. Iran didn't strike Israeli positions with stealth bombers. They used swarms of cheap drones. The most advanced military in history spent two decades building yesterday's weapon while the rest of the world moved into tomorrow. If you think this matters for America's future, type yes in the comments. Let's go back to where this started, the 1990s. The Cold War was over, defense budgets were shrinking. The Pentagon had a smart idea. Instead of building different expensive jets for each service, build one aircraft that could do everything. One design, three versions, lower costs, shared parts, it made perfect sense on paper. The Air Force would get the F-35A for conventional runways, the Marines would get the F-35B that could take off vertically, the Navy would get the F-35C for aircraft carriers. Allies around the world were signing up. Britain, Italy, Japan, Australia, it was going to revolutionize air power. In 2001, they said each plane would cost $40 to $50 million. First delivery, 2008. Total program cost, $200 billion. Our military planners, our engineers, our best minds were all in, and they deserved respect for trying. This was supposed to be the aircraft that would keep American pilots safe and superior for generations. The technology was groundbreaking stealth capabilities, advanced sensors, the ability to share battlefield data instantly with other planes and ground forces. But then, reality hit. The vertical takeoff version was too heavy. Engineers had to halt development for six months just to redesign it. The stealth coding kept cracking. The software had 8 million lines of code and kept failing. Testing revealed problems nobody anticipated. Parts that were supposed to be 80% common across all three versions? By 2017, only 20% were actually shared. Each problem added months. Each redesign added costs. The simulator needed to complete testing didn't even exist yet. It still doesn't work properly. And the costs, that's where things got really interesting. Real quick, before we get into what happened next with those costs, if you're finding this valuable, take two seconds to hit that like button and subscribe. Over 98% of you watch without subscribing. It's free. It takes one click, and it helps us bring you more content like this. Now back to those numbers. By 2012, the cost per plane had doubled. The Government Accountability Office reported a 93% increase over the original 2001 estimates. By 2017, lifetime program costs hit $1.5 trillion. Today, $2.1 trillion through 2088. Let me put that in perspective. That's more than the entire GDP of most countries. That's about $855 million per aircraft over its operational lifetime when you include everything. Development, production, fuel, maintenance, upgrades, personnel training. But here's what really matters. Mission readiness. In 2023, F-35s were only ready to fly about 52% of the time. The Air Force target, 90%. These jets kept overheating. Engines failed more than expected. Parts took months to arrive. The logistics system didn't work properly. 
And this isn't a criticism of our incredible pilots or the brave men and women who maintain these aircraft. They work miracles with what they're given. These Americans serve with honor and dedication every single day. The problem was the program itself, the endless development cycle that couldn't adapt fast enough. Development was supposed to finish in 2018, it's 2025, and we're still adding upgrades. The Block 4 modernization started in 2018 and now won't finish until 2027. That's another $16.5 billion on top of everything else. Costs keep growing. Meanwhile, something else was happening on the other side of the world. Something that would expose the biggest flaw in America's entire defense strategy. February 2022, Russia invades Ukraine. The world expected massive tank battles, air superiority fights, traditional warfare. And at first, that's what happened. Russia sent columns of tanks. Ukraine used Turkish-made Bayraktar drones effectively, but they were still traditional military equipment. Then, everything changed. Ukraine started modifying commercial drones, the kind hobbyists fly, adding grenades, flying them into Russian positions. Within months, these cheap drones were taking out million-dollar vehicles. Russian FPV drones, costing around $400, started destroying American M1 Abrams tanks worth $8 million each. The math was brutal. One drone destroys one tank. $400 takes out $8 million. By 2024, Ukraine had produced 2.2 million drones. They built an entire industry from scratch, over 500 manufacturers. Russia was making 4,000 FPV drones every single day. 70% of casualties in Ukraine are now caused by drones, not fighter jets, not bombers, not artillery, drones. And here's what shocked American military planners. Ukraine became the world's top producer of combat drones in under three years. They created an entire military branch just for drone warfare. The Unmanned Systems Forces, first country in history to do that. Their soldiers weren't waiting years for new equipment. They were testing, improving, and deploying new drone designs in weeks, sometimes days. Soldiers in the field would suggest modifications. Engineers would make changes overnight. New versions would deploy the next morning. The cost difference is staggering. A Ukrainian FPV drone, $400. An F-35 flight hour, $33,600. One F-35, $80 million minimum. One drone swarm of 200 units, $80,000. And the drones are winning. In June 2025, Ukraine used 117 drones to strike five Russian air bases. They hit 41 aircraft, including strategic bombers. Estimated damage, $7 billion. Cost of the drones, less than 50,000. Pivot point. This is when the Pentagon realized they had a serious problem. America catches up. To their credit, American military leaders saw what was happening. They didn't make excuses. They didn't deny reality. They adapted. That's what our military does best. July 2025, Defense Secretary Hegseth issued a directive. Every Army squad must have drones by the end of 2026. Not some units, not special forces only, every single squad. The Replicator program launched to produce thousands of autonomous systems. Budget? Billions. Timeline? Now. The Army plans to build 10,000 small drones per month starting in 2026. The Marine Corps created attack drone teams based on Ukrainian lessons. New training centers opened at Fort Bragg, Fort Bliss, bases across the country. Our soldiers are learning drone warfare. Combat training now includes drone wars, force-on-force -force exercises where both sides use swarms. Pilots learn to fly multiple drones simultaneously. And our troops are incredible. They're adapting faster than anyone expected, taking lessons from Ukraine, testing new systems, providing feedback that improves designs in real time. Our 82nd Airborne, our Marines, our Special Forces, they're leading this transformation with the same excellence they've always shown. But here's the hard truth. We're catching up. Not leading, catching up. Countries around the world are building drone programs. China, Iran, 
Turkey, Israel. Sweden just unveiled software that lets soldiers control 100 drones simultaneously. 11 nations now have drone swarm programs. The technology is spreading faster than any weapon system in history. The Pentagon allocated $150 billion in new defense spending. Much of it goes to drones and AI. Companies that didn't exist five years ago are now worth billions because they build autonomous systems. The F-35 isn't a failure. It's an incredibly capable aircraft flown by the world's best pilots. Our men and women in uniform make it work despite its challenges but it represents something bigger. The risk of perfecting yesterday's weapon while tomorrow's war passes you by. 22 years, $2.1 trillion. And in that time, warfare transformed completely. America is adapting now, fast. Our military always does. That's what makes our forces the best in the world. The dedication, skill, and bravery of American service members remain unmatched. But this should be a wake-up call. Innovation moves faster than ever. Threats evolve daily. We can't afford to spend decades developing one solution. If this opened your eyes to something new, hit that like button and subscribe. We cover defense, technology, and the future of American strength. The future isn't coming. It's already here.